to understand the concept of limits, uh, we have to understand um, this continuity. In the sense, most continuous functions that do not have any breaks or jumps don't necessarily have uh, the need to look at limits. Um, even if we looked at the limits, it would just match the value of the function. So I'm going to start with a well-known function that has breaks, um, which is a piecewise defined function. As the name um, suggests, we have pieces. So I'm going to start with a piece between 1 and 2 and another piece between 2 and 4. So let's just say that the value here is 2 and the value there is 4. Now what about the values of the function itself? Well, if we look at the values of the function, we have f of 1 to be equal to 2, f of, I'll call that 4, f of 4 equals 4. But what about f of 2? So f of 2 is not defined. Um, in a conventional sense. Um, but if we look at the dots, uh, we could see that at 2, the value of the function is 4. And it is defined right here. And how do we recognize that? We recognize it by looking at the open dot or the closed dot. An open dot would mean the value of the function is not used, which is why we don't use the value 2. A closed dot would imply that the value of the function is included, which is why at f of 2 we have the value 4. Um, so, how do limits come into play? What does a limit mean? So, as you approach a point, just like in the previous videos, how the slope of the secant line as you uh, converge to a single point ended up being at the slope of the tangent line, we can actually look at the um, limit of a function by approaching a particular point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to approach the point 2 from the left-hand side. So as I approach 2 from the left-hand side, the value of 2 um, starts at 2 here when x is equal to 1 and slowly it is moving toward that open dot. So as x is moving toward 2, the value of y is slowly moving toward that open dot. But keep in mind, the open dot implies that the value is not included for the function. So the function value is not defined, but the limit is defined. So we started with x, and x was approaching 2, so which is right here, starting at 1, going toward 2. And we started from the left-hand side on the x-axis, so we put a negative there. So that's what we call a left limit. And the left limit of this function, y equals f of x, is simply 2. The reason being, as we approach 2 on the x-axis, the value of y approached 2. Now, we could also approach the function from the right-hand side. In other words, we start at 4 and head toward 2. So the limit f of x as x approaches 2, but from the right-hand side, so we put a positive there, 
that's called the right limit. So as we go to word 2 from f, there is nothing here. So the function is not defined there at all. There is nothing. So I'm going to erase that to avoid confusion. But the function is defined right over here. So we start at 4, and as we gently move toward um, 2, the value of y comes to 4. And that value is included, so the right limit here would be equal to 4. And that is how we find the left and right limit. So the left and right limits of a function are called one-sided limits. Now that is for a piecewise defined function. What about a continuous function? A continuous function is one that doesn't have any breaks. So let us consider a very simple function, which is a parabola. And let's just say that that point is 2, and that value is 4. And I will define that to be um, f of x. So I would want to approach the value 2 from either side of the function. So Let's just start at 0 over here. And I'm going to move along the axis from 0 to word 2. And arbitrarily, I'm going to start at 4 and go to word 2 from the right hand side. So what happens to the values of x as I approach 2 from the right hand side? So for each value of x as we approach 2, the value of y is moving up and it is getting closer to 4. And at x is equal to 2, the value of y is 4. So the limit x approaches 2 from the left hand side is simply equal to 4. In a similar manner, if I started on the right hand side, and I am heading toward 2 on the x-axis. For each value of x, the function is going to move because I'm plugging in values of x to get values of y, and it is going to move and get right here to y equals 4. So as I approach 2 from the right-hand side, the limit is still 4. So to find the limit, we just want to know um, the point where we want to evaluate the limit and from which di direction are we approaching that particular point. So we have either the left-hand side or right-hand side. Later on, we would define the limit of the function. The limit of the function is actually based on the one-sided limits that we obtain. So continuing the concept of one-sided limits, we have something called an infinite limit. In other words, a limit can be infinite. One key thing that we've got to understand in calculus and limits is that when we say an infinite limit, that is not the same as limit at infinity um, <coughs> or um, undefined or does not exist. So they're not the same thing. So I'm going to take another function y equals 1 over x. If you graph this in the calculator, 
this function would look like that. And I am going to find the limit at zero. So what is happening as I approach the point zero from the left and from the right? So limit x approaches zero from the left inside. So I start at some point. So for each value of x, I evaluate a value of y. And as I get closer and closer to zero, the value of the function is heading toward negative infinity. So that would be negative infinity. In a similar manner, if I look at the point zero and want to evaluate the limit from the right inside, I have to pick values of x and I'm going to approach zero from the right inside. So for each value of x, I am going to get a value of y and I'm slowly approaching zero. And as I get closer and closer to zero, the function is moving up toward positive infinity. So that is the limit of a function, of the function 1 over x, uh, left and right, um, and it turns out to be negative infinity and positive infinity. So those are infinite limits. And we should not confuse this with something called a limit at infinity. So limit at infinity would simply mean <clears throat> we tend to approach infinity for the values of x. So what is happening as x approaches infinity? So if we look at this graph and I go in the opposite direction because I want to know what happens to the value of the function as it is approaching infinity. So I'm heading toward infinity for the x values. And this function would get closer and closer to zero, but it will never touch zero. And that is the concept of infinity. So as I increase um, the value of x toward infinity, the limit of the function is going to be equal to zero. Keep in mind, the limit of a function and the value of the function are not the same, um, but for continuous functions, they are the same. Um, I can go toward negative infinity in this function. So as I move x toward negative infinity in that direction, the function is slowly approaching zero, but it will never approach zero. It would get closer and closer to zero, but it will not become zero. So the function is approaching zero as x approaches infinity. So that is called limit at infinity. So how do we formally define the limit of the function? A function f of x approaches the limit l at some point if the limit x approaches a f of x would equal to the value of l. And this could only happen if the 
limit as we approach the point A from the right hand side is equal to the limit we approach um, A from the left hand side and both those values would be the same which would be equal to L. In other words if the left and right limits of a function exists at a point x is equal to a then the limit exists at x is equal to a otherwise we conclude that the limit does not exist and in short term we tend to call it as dne keep in mind does a limit of not existing is not the same as saying negative infinity and infinity in algebra you might have called that undefined so does not exist is not the same as saying undefined So <clears throat> here, are, here, here is an example, and clearly the function is a piecewise defined function. And it has two pieces. One is from negative infinity all the way up to two. And I'm not going to put a square bracket there because there is a break. And the other one, oops. Would be from two all the way up to positive infinity. But if you observe carefully, um, there is a missing point in the middle, which is at 4. We will address that later. So I'm going to write it that way. So the pieces are defined um, negative infinity to 2 and 2 to 4, union 4 to infinity, and that forms the domain. of the function. So we have a bunch of limits here. The first one is a left-sided limit. We want to know what happens to the value of the limit as I approach the function um, toward 2. So I'm going closer to 2 and I'm going from the left-hand side. So the value of the function y is slowly moving and it is getting closer and closer and closer to that value and that value is 3. So the left sided limit there would be 3. Now the right sided limit I'm going to approach the function from the right hand side so you just have to pick the nearest breakpoint. So I'm going to start at 4. You don't have to start all the way from infinity. So I'm going to start somewhere here because I'm approaching 2 from the right hand side. 
So as the values of x change, the values of y slowly come closer and closer and closer to the value 1. So it doesn't become 1, it is just approaching 1. So the limit there would be 1. So we have limit x approaching 2 plus equals 1 and the limit as x approaches from the left hand side is equal to 3. Do the limits match? The limits don't match as x is equal to 2 therefore limit x approaches 2 f of x would be not undefined it does not exist so what is the value of the function at f of 2 so if you look at this function there is a closed dot and that is a open door um sorry i have it backwards so that is an open dot and that is a closed dot so the value of the function at f of 2 would correspond to the value of that closed dot. In other words, you don't have a break or opening. So the value of the function at 2 is simply 3. Now, what happens to the limit as we get closer to 4? So let's look at uh, what's happening as I get closer to 4. So approaching 4 from the left hand side. So the function is slowly moving up and it is getting toward that point. And if I approach 4 from the right hand side, the function is slowly moving up for each value of x and it is getting closer to the same value 4. So in that case limit x approaches 4 from the left hand side ends up being 4 because the function moved toward 4 so we have the value 4 and limit x approaches 4 from the right hand side is also 4 and those two match the one-sided limits match therefore the limit exists at 4 And that's limit is 4. But keep in mind, the limit of a function and the value of the function are not the same. So in limit, the function is approaching 4. But if you observe closely, at x is equal to 4, what we have is an open dot. So the function is not defined at f or 4. So that is undefined. So key things to remember 
the limit of the function and the value of the function in a problem like this. Um, anytime you have breaks or open doors, they're not the same. With continuous functions though, uh, where you don't have any breaks or discontinuities, the limit and the value of the function will be one and the same. So here is a practical example. A patient is receiving a 150 milligrams injection of a drug every four hours. The graph shows the amount F of T of the drug in the bloodstream after T hours. So we want to find T as we approach 12 from the left hand side and T as we approach 12 from the right hand side. So 12 is right over here. So, <clears throat> this is sort of tricky because um, there is nothing here and it might be confusing, but in a case like this, we look at the dot, um, the open or the closed dot. So, as T is approaching 12, so the value of Y is going up toward that and suddenly it jumps down so it is getting um, to 150 so the limit as x approaches 12 <clears throat> from the right hand side is 150. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong limit. I take that back. Um, so you start here and you go toward that open dot and that value happens to be 300. My bad. So from the right hand side, as we approach 12, the value of the function is moving upward toward that open dot, and that open dot is 300. Now we're going to do the same thing of approaching 12 from the left hand side. So the nearest point is right over here, and I am going to get closer and closer to 12 on the x-axis, or the time here. So for each value of time, the value of the function is getting closer and closer to 150. So the limit, x approaches 12 minus f of x would be equal to 150. So what is the significance of uh, significance of these limits? So if you read the problem carefully, the patient receives an injection every four hours. So at eight hours, at t equals eight, the patient received 180 milligrams, excuse me, 150 milligrams dose. So from 150, it jumped to 300. But technically, it is not including the value of 300. And over a four hour period, as T approaches 12, the amount of medication or drug drops to 150 from the left hand side at which point we give a, th a 150 milligram dose so it would jump to 300 so if we have to look at 16 t equals 16 and go back and ask well if at time t equals 16 hours, we had 150 milli uh, milligrams, 
So what happened to the value of the function um, as we approached um, 300 um, or approached 12? So I believe it's not exactly 150. I think it's slightly higher than 150 right there. So I should probably call it 160 milligrams at t equals 12. So that doesn't look like exactly at 150. So at t equals 16, it is at a different amount, which is right here, that is not 150. Um, let's just say approximately um, some amount, 180 milligrams. I'm just making this up for the purposes of understanding. So if at t equals 16, we had 180 milligrams, if I go back to where t equals 12 hours, what is the amount of the drug? And that amount would be 300 milligrams because we gave a bump in the dose at exactly t equals 12. So um, <clears throat> the question to ask now is what is the value of the drug? What is the amount of the drug exactly at one, uh, exactly at 12 uh, hours? Exactly at 12 hours, the amount of the drug was that number right there, which I called it 160 milligrams. It is an approximate value. So F of 12 is 160 milligrams. However, what is the limit at 12? So limit x approaches 12, f of x, does it exist? It does not. So the reason why the limit doesn't exist is because the right limit doesn't match the left limit. The right hand side we uh, had an observation that as I come from 16 hours back towards 12 hours, at 12 hours, we administered a dose that brought the dose up to 300 milligrams and it dropped down to 180 milligrams um, as time went by toward 16 hours. Um, and the right hand limit does not match the left hand limit, so we will not have a limit at 12. So here is a function. We have to find the limit here for those values. Before you start a function with limits, you should always ask the question, well, could I simplify? Um, is there a possibility to simplify? So we have um, x squared minus 3x divided by x squared minus 9. And you can see in the numerator, we have x in common. So if I pull that x out, I have x times x minus 3. The denominator is a quadratic function, x squared minus 9, which I could factor as x plus 3 times x minus 3. So those two terms would get cancelled, and I would simply have limit x approaches 3, x over x plus 3. So what is going to happen as we approach um, the value 3? So we're going to make use of a calculator, which would make things easier. Going to enter the function, which is the reduced function, not the original function, the reduced function, which is x divided by, don't forget the parentheses, x plus 3. And I'm going to use the table of um, function here. Um, I'm going to start the table at 0 because we are approaching 3. And 
the independent variable is x. In other words, we're going to change the value of x because the question has different values here. So I'm going to write them. So 3.1, 3.05, 3.01, 3.02, 3.03, 3.04, 3.05, 3.06, 3.07, 3.08, 3.09, 3.10, 3.11, 3.12, 3.13, 3.14, 3.15, 3.16, 3.17, 3.18, 3.19, 3.20, 3.21, 3.22, 3.23, 3.24, 3.25, 3.26, 3.27, 3.28, 3.29, 3.30, 3.31, 3.32, 3.33, 3.34, 3.35, 3.36, 3.37, 3.38, 3.39, 3.40, 3.41, 3.42, 3.43, 3.44, 3.45, 3.46, 3.47, 3.48, 3.49, 3.50, 3.51, 3.52, 3.53, 3.54, 3.55, 3.56, 3.57, 3.58, 3.59, 3.60, 3.61, 3.62, 3.63, 3.64, 3.65, 3.66, 3.67, 3.68, 3.69, 3.70, 3.71, 3.72, 3.73, 3.74, 3.75, 3.76, 3.77, 3.78, 3.79, 3.80, 3.81, 3.82, 3.83, 3.84, 3.85, 3.86, 3.87, 3.88, 3.89, 3.90, 3.91, 3.92, 3.93, 3.94, 3.95, 3.96, 3.97, 3.98, 3.99, 3.10, 3.11, 3.12, 3.13, 3.14, 3.15, 3.16, 3.17, 3.18, 3.19, 3.20, 3.21, 3.22, 3.23, 3.24, 3.25, 3.26, 3.27, 3.28, 3.29, 3.30, 3.31, 3.32, 3.33, 3.34, 3.35, 3.36, 3.37, 3.38, 3.39, 3.40, 3.41, 3.42, 3.43, 3.44, 3.45, 3.46, 3.47, 3.48, 3.49, 3.50, 3.51, 3.52, 3.53, 3.54, 3.55, 3.56, 3.57, 3.58, 3.59, 3.60, 3.61, 3.62, 3.63, 3.64, 3.65, 3.66, 3.67, 3.68, 3.69, 3.70, 3.71, 3.72, 3.73, 3.74, 3.75, 3.76, 3.77, 3.78, 3.79, 3.80, 3.81, 3.82, 3.83, 3.84, 3.85, 3.86, 3.87, 3.88, 3.90, 3.91, 3.92, 3.93, 3.94, 3.95, 3.96, 3.97, 3.98, 3.99, 3.10, 3.11, 3.12, 3.13, 3.14, 3.15, 3.16, 3.17, 3.18, 3.19, 3.20, 3.21, 3.22, 3.23, 3.24, 3.25, 3.26, 3.27, 3.28, 3.29, 3.30, 3.31, 3.32, 3.33, 3.34, 3.35, 3.36, 3.37, 3.38, 3.39, 3.40, 3.41, 3.42, 3.43, 3.44, 3.45, 3.46, 3.47, 3.48, 3.49, 3.50, 3.51, 3.52, 3.53, 3.54, 3.55, 3.56, 3.57, 3.58, 3.59, 3.60, 3.61, 3.62, 3.63, 3.64, 3.65, 3.66, 3.67, 3.68, 3.69, 3.70, 3.71, 3.72, 3.73, 3.74, 3.75, 3.76, 3.77, 3.78, 3.79, 3.80, 3.81, 3.82, 3.83, 3.84, 3.85, 3.86, 3.87, 3.88, 3.89, 3.90, 3.91, 3.92, 3.93, 3.94, 3.95, 3.96, 3.97, 3.98, 3.99, 3.10, 3.11, 3.12, 3.13, 3.14, 3.15, 3.16, 3.17, 3.18, 3.19, 3.20, 3.21, 3.22, 3.23, 3.24, 3.25, 3.26, 3.27, 3.28, 3.29, 3.30, 3.31, 3.32, 3.33, 3.34, 3.35, 3.36, 3.37, 3.38, 3.39, 3.40, 3.41, 3.42, 3.43, 3.44, 3.45, 3.46, 3.47, 3.48, 3.49, 3.50, 3.51, 3.52, 3.53, 3.54, 3.55, 3.56, 3.57, 3.58, 3.59, 3.60, 3.61, 3.62, 3.63, 3.64, 3.65, 3.66, 3.67, 3.68, 3.69, 3.70, 3.71, 3.72, 3.73, 3.74, 3.75, 3.76, 3.77, 3.78, 3.79, 3.80, 3.81, 3.82, 3.83, 3.84, 3.85, 3.86, 3.87, 3.88, 3.89, 3.90, 3.91, 3.92, 3.93, 3.94, 3.95, 3.96, 3.97, 3.98, 3.99, 3.10, 3.11, 3.12, 3.13, 3.14, 3.15, 3.16, 3.17, 3.18, 3.19, 3.20, 3.21, 3.22, 3.23, 3.24, 3.25, 3.26, 3.27, 3.28, 3.29, 3.30, 3.31, 3.32, 3.33, 3.34, 3.35, 3.36, 3.37, 3.38, 3.39, 3.40, 3.41, 3.42, 3.43, 3.44, 3.45, 3.46, 3.47, 3.48, 3.49, 3.50, 3.51, 3.52, 3.53, 3.54, 3.55, 3.56, 3.57, 3.58, 3.59, 3.60, 3.61, 3.62, 3.63, 3.64, 3.65, 3.66, 3.67, 3.68, 3.69, 3.70, 3.71, 3.72, 3.73, 3.74, 3.75, 3.76, 3.77, 3.78, 3.79, 3.80, 3.81, 3.82, 3.83, 3.84, 3.85, 3.86, 3.87, 3.88, 3.89, 3.90, 3.91, 3.92, 3.93, 3.94, 3.95, 3.96, 3.97, 3.98, 3.99, 3.10, 3.11, 3.12, 3.13, 3.14, 3.15, 3.16, 3.17, 3.18, 3.19, 3.20, 3.21, 3.22, 3.23, 3.24, 3.25, 3.26, 3.27, 3.28, 3.29, 3.30, 3.31, 3.32, 3.33, 3.34, 3.35, 3.36, 3.37, 3.38, 3.39, 3.40, 3.41, 3.42, 3.43, 3.44, 3.45, 3.46, 3.47, 3.48, 3.49, 3.50, 3.51, 3.52, 3.53, 3.54, 3.55, 3.56, 3.57, 3.58, 3.59, 3.60, 3.61, 3.62, 3.63, 3.64, 3.65, 3.66, 3.67, 3.68, 3.69, 3.70, 3.71, 3.72, 3.73, 3.74, 3.75, 3.76, 3.77, 3.78, 3.79, 3.80, 3.81, 3.82, 3.83, 3.84, 3.85, 3.86, 3.87, 3.88, 3.89, 3.90, 3.91, 3.92, 3.93, 3.94, 3.95, 3.96, 3.97, 3.98, 3.99, 3.10, 3.11, 3.12, 3.13, 3.14, 3.15, 3.16, 3.17, 3.18, 3.19, 3.20, 3.21, 3.22, 3.23, 3.24, 3.25, 3.26, 3.27, 3.28, 3.29, 3.30, 3.31, 3.32, 3.33, 3.34, 3.35, 3.36, 3.37, 3.38, 3.39, 3.40, 3.41, 3.42, 3.43, 3.44, 3.45, 3.46, 3.47, 3.48, 3.49, 3.50, 3.51, 3.52, 3.53, 3.54, 3.55, 3.56, 3.57, 3.58, 3.59, 3.60, 3.61, 3.62, 3.63, 3.64, 3.65, 3.66, 3.67, 3.68, 3.69, 3.70, 3.71, 3.72, 3.73, 3.74, 3.75, 3.76, 3.77, 3.78, 3.79, 3.80, 3.81, 3.82, 3.83, 3.84, 3.85, 3.86, 3.87, 3.88, 3.89, 3.90, 3.91, 3.92, 3.93, 3.94, 3.95, 3.96, 3.97, 3.98, 3.99, 3.10, 3.11, 3.12, 3.13, 3.14, 3.15, 3.16, 3.17, 3.18, 3.19, 3.20, 3.21, 3.22, 3.23, 3.24, 3.25, 3.26, 3.27, 3.28, 3.29, 3.30, 3.31, 3.32, 3.33, 3.34, 3.35, 3.36, 3.37, 3.38, 3.39, 3.40, 3.41, 3.42, 3.43, 3.44, 3.45, 3.46, 3.47, 3.48, 3.49, 3.50, 3.51, 3.52, 3.23, 3.24, 3.25, 3.26, 3.27, 3.28, 3.29, 3.30, 3.31, 3.32, 3.33, 3.34, 3.35, 3.36, 3.37, 3.38, 3.39, 3.40, 3.41, 3.42, 3.43, 3.44, 3.45, 3.46, 3.47, 3.48, 3.49, 3.50, 3.51, 3.52, 3.53, 3.54, 3.55, 3.56, 3.57, 3.58, 3.59, 3.60, 3.61, 3.62, 3.63, 3.64, 3.65, 3.66, 3.67, 3.68, 3.69, 3.70, 3.71, 3.72, 3.73, 3.74, 3.75, 3.76, 3.77, 3.78, 3.79, 3.80, 3.81, 3.82, 3.83, 3.84, 3.85, 3.86, 3.87, 3.88, 3.89, 3.90, 3.91, 3.92, 3.93, 3.94, 3.95, 3.96, 3.97, 3.98, 3.99, 3.10, 3.11, 3.12, 3.13, 3.14, 3.15, 3.16, 3.17, 3.18, 3.19, 3.20, 3.21, 3.22, 3.23, 3.24, 3.25, 3.26, 3.27, 3.28, 3.29, 3.30, 3.31, 3.32, 3.33, 3.34, 3.35, 3.36, 3.37, 3.38, 3.39, 3.40, 3.41, 3.42, 3.43, 3.44, 3.45, 3.46, 3.47, 3.48, 3.49, 3.50, 3.51, 3.52, 3.53, 3.54, 3.55, 3.56, 3.57, 3.58, 3.59, 3.60, 3.61, 3.62, 3.63, 3.64, 3.65, 3.66, 3.67, 3.68, 3.69, 3.70, 3.71, 3.72, 3.73, 3.74, 3.75, 3.76, 3.77, 3.78, 3.79, 3.80, 3.81, 3.82, 3.83, 3.84, 3.85, 3.86, 3.87, 3.88, 3.89, 3.90, 3.91, 3.92, 3.93, 3.94, 3.95, 3.96, 3.97, 3.98, 3.99, 3.10, 3.11, 3.12, 3.13, 3.14, 3.15, 3.16, 3.17, 3.18, 3.19, 3.20, 3.21, 3.22, 3.23, 3.24, 3.25, 3.26, 3.27, 3.28, 3.29, 3.30, 3.31, 3.32, 3.33, 3.34, 3.35, 3.36, 3.37, 3.38, 3.39, 3.40, 3.41, 3.42, 3.43, 3.44, 3.45, 3.46, 3.47, 3.48, 3.49, 3.50, 3.51, 3.52, 3.53, 3.54, 3.55, 3.56, 3.57, 3.58, 3.59, 3.60, 3.61, 3.62, 3.63, 3.64, 3.65, 3.66, 3.67, 3.68, 3.69, 3.70, 3.71, 3.72, 3.73, 3.74, 3.75, 3.76, 3.77, 3.78, 3.79, 3.90, 3.91, 3.92, 3.93, 3.94, 3.95, 3.96, 3.97, 3.98, 3.99, 3.10, 3.11, 3.12, 3.13, 3.14, 3.15, 3.16, 3.17, 3.18, 3.19, 3.20, 3.21, 3.22, 3.23, 3.24, 3.25, 3.26, 3.27, 3.28, 3.29, 3.30, 3.31, 3.32, 3.33, 3.34, 3.35, 3.36, 3.37, 3.38, 3.39, 3.40, 3.41, 3.42, 3.43, 3.44, 3.45, 3.46, 3.47, 3.48, 3.49, 3.50, 3.51, 3.52, 3.53, 3.54, 3.55, 3.56, 3.57, 3.58, 3.59, 3.90, 3.91, 3.92, 3.93, 3.94, 3.95, 3.96, 3.97, 3.98, 3.99, 3.10, 3.11, 3.12, 3.13, 3.14, 3.15, 3.16, 3.17, 3.18, 3.19, 3.20, 3.21, 3.22, 3.23, 3.24, 3.25, 3.26, 3.27, 3.28, 3.29, 3.30, 3.31, 3.32, 3.33, 3.34, 3.35, 3.36, 3.37, 3.38, 3.39, 3.40, 3.41, 3.42, 3.43, 3.44, 3.45, 3.46, 3.47, 3.48, 3.49, 3.50, 3.51, 3.52, 3.53, 3.54, 3.55, 3.56, 3.57, 3.58, 3.59, 3.30, 3.31, 3.32, 3.33, 3.34, 3.35, 3.36, 3.37, 3.38, 3.39, 3.40, 3.41, 3.42, 3.43, 3.44, 3.45, 3.46, 3.47, 3.48, 3.49, 3.50, 3.51, 3.52, 3.53, 3.54, 3.55, 3.56, 3.57, 3.58, 3.59, 3.30, 3.31, 3.32, 3.33, 3.34, 3.35, 3.36, 3.37, 3.38, 3.39, 3.40, 3.41, 3.42, 3.43, 3.44, 3.45, 3.46, 3.57, 3.58, 3.59, 3.30, 3.31, 3.32, 3.33, 3.34, 3.35, 3.36, 3.37, 3.38, 3.39, 3.40, 3.41, 3.42, 3.43, 3.44, 3.45, 3.46, 3.47, 3.48, 3.49, 3.50, 3.51, 3.52, 3.53, 3.54, 3.55, 3.56, 3.57, 3.58, 3.59, 3.30, 3.31, 3.32, 3.33, 3.34, 3.35, 3.36, 3.37, 3.
focusing on, because x is approaching 3, on the right-hand side, the function doesn't have a break or discontinuity. So the limit of the function and the value of the function at 3 will be 1 and the same. So here we are looking at the point 4, and if you plug in 4 in this particular function, um, we would end up getting a denominator um, that would be uh, zero. So, let's see what happens um, when we graph this. So, ln of x minus ln. of 4, do not forget the parentheses, divided by Okay, let's graph that first looks like a weird graph so let's adjust the window um minus one oh well it's all positive so that's what we see so just like the previous problem where we did not have any break or discontinuities on the side where we were looking at the limit in this problem we don't um, see any breaks or discontinuities on the side we are looking at, which is x approaches 4. But if you directly applied the limit, um, this is going to give us 0 over 0. Uh, what do I mean by that? Um, applying the limit would mean taking the value of 4 and applying to the value of x. So you get ln of 4 minus ln of 4 divided by 4 minus 4, which would give you 0 over 4. Excuse me, 0 over 0. 0 over 0 is not 0 in the sense of limits. So we've got to be careful. And clearly, if you look at the graph, at 4, we don't have 0. So if the value of x is right here, and right there, when x is 4, we don't have a value 0. So something else is going on. So the in, um, this is what we call an indeterminate form. And we will address this later on when we use limits using a rule that we have. So how do we go about doing this? The only way to do this is by using um, a calculator um, because I can't uh, give you that rule until I complete um, derivatives. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a set of values. I want to approach zero, excuse me, four. So I'm going to start at 4.01. 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, that is from the right hand side, and 3.9999, 3.999, 9, 9, 3 You just have to look at the points closer to 4. You don't have to start at 0 and go all the way up to 10. So, 4 is right over there. So I'm approaching 4 along the x-axis from the right-hand side, and I'm approaching 4 along the x-axis from the left-hand side. So f of x, um, when we plug in, uh, let's go ahead and use the table. I'll plug in 4.01. I end up getting a value of 
point two four nine six nine four point zero zero one I end up getting a value of two point excuse me point two four nine nine seven four point zero 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 one I get point two five you should get an idea as to what this value is, the limit is by now. 3.9999, I get 0 0.25, 3.999, I get 0 0.25003, 3.99, I get 0 0.25031. So as I approach 4 from the right-hand side, the value of the function is approaching 0.25. And as I approach the function from the left-hand side, on the x-axis, the value of the function is also approaching to 0.25 and the limits match the right side of the right side limit matches the left side limit therefore um, the limit of the function is 0.25 if you look at the graph, the graph does not have any breaks um, or jumps or discontinuities. So the value of the function is well defined. So the value of the function at 4 is also 0.25 because there are no open dots, um, there are no vertical asymptotes at x is equal to 4. So in this problem, the limit and the value of the function are one and the same, and that is 0.25. So this particular limit is based on sine and tangent functions, and we are going to plug in a value of 0 and based on a review on trigonometry, you should know that sine zero is zero and tangent zero is zero. Again, if we apply the limit for theta, we have sine zero over tangent zero, which is zero over zero, that is what we call an indeter indeterminate form. So unless I do derivatives, I can't use the rule, which we'll discuss later, or we could come back and revisit this particular problem. Um, we can't find the limit directly. So we can make use of the calculator. So I'm going to vary the values of theta, and I'm going to pick values closer to zero as I approach zero from either side. So let me start at point one, point o oh five, point zero zero one, and point zero 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 one. And on the other side I'm going to have negative point zero 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 one, negative zero point zero zero one, negative zero point zero five and negative 0 0.1. So 0 is right there for theta. So I'm going to approach the 0 on the x-axis from the left-hand side, then from the right-hand side, from point 0.1 to point zero 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 one. So even though I have 0 over 0 here, when I graph this function, you will see that the function is going to be um, continuous. Um, let's go ahead and graph this. I could write it as sine 3x divided by tangent 2x. 
and let's go ahead and graph this. It's a wave, so we may have to adjust the window. Let's zoom zero. So there are discontinuities on other segments, but close to zero, we can see that there are no discontinuities. And in other words, right there, at that point, close to zero, um, we don't have any discontinuities. So what is that value that we see exactly at zero right there? Um, so let's go ahead and use the table option. And I think it's better if I clear this. I'm trying to reset this table. Um, hit delete okay so sine 3x divided by tangent 2x and I've set the table set part starting point is 0 I'm going to ask for the value of x, which is the independent variable, and let's go ahead and evaluate the table. So the value of the function f of theta which in this case is sine 3 theta over tangent 2 theta will be when I plug in point 0.1 I get 1.4578. When I plug in 0 0.05, I get 1.4894. When I plug in 0 0.001, I get 1.5. When I plug in 0 0.0001, I get 1.5. Now I'm going to plug in negative 0 0.0001, which is 1.5. You should have a good idea by now as to what the limit is. Negative 0 0.05. And the next one is going to be 1.4578, but let's go ahead and do it regardless. So negative 0 0.1 is 1.4578. So as I approach uh, from the right hand side toward 0, I end up getting a value of 1.5. So the limit as x approaches 0 from the right hand side would give us a value of 1.5 limit call it theta since we are using theta for the independent variable x approaches 0 minus from the left hand side is 1.5 the two limits match so the limit at 0 is simply 1.5 mind you even though there are discontinuities as I mentioned there aren't any discontinuities closer to our limit it seems pretty continuous in other words there is no break and at x is equal to zero the value um, 
I can actually make this better. I'll change the value of x. And the minimum and the maximum, let's just set it to minus 5 to 5. And you can see, exactly at x is equal to 0, the value of the function is 0.5. So, on either side of the limit, there aren't any discontinuities. The function seems continuous but there are discontinuities and vertical asymptotes on other um, areas of the graph. So, since there isn't a discontinuity at x is equal to 0, the value of the function f of 0 is also 1.5. Now, this is a function which is going to cause a problem at x is equal to 5 because if x is equal to 5 then x plus 1 over x minus 5 would result in 6 over 5 minus 5 which is 6 over 0 divide by it is a divide by 0 so there is going to be a vertical asymptote And if there is a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 5, that simply means a discontinuity. In other words, there is going to be a break at x is equal to 5. Let's see if there is a break at x is equal to 5. So, Go from 2 all the way up to 8, negative 10, and positive 10. So I started at 2, um, but perhaps I'll start at 0 to avoid confusion. So I started at 0, so if you look at it, I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Um, and right at 5, there happens to be a break. So what happens to the limit? So if I draw this graph... That's what I would have, and that is at x is equal to 5. So what is happening as we approach 5 from the right-hand side? So that's from the right-hand side. So the function is slowly moving upward, and it is going toward infinity. So the limit, x approaches 5 plus, x plus 1 over x minus 5 is positive infinity. As I approach 5 from the left-hand side, the function is moving closer and closer and closer toward negative infinity. So limit x approaches 5 from the left, would be negative infinity. So here's a question. Are these infinite limits or limits at 
infinity. These are infinite limits because the value of the limits um, are infinite or undefined. Um, is there a limit, or let me rewrite it this way, what is limit x approaches 5 f of x, that is limit x approaches 5 x plus 1 over x minus 5. Um, does a limit exist? Um, if you notice that the right-sided limit does not match the left-sided limit, so the limit cannot exist at 5. So, D and E. So here is another example. We are approaching 3 from the left hand side. Let's see what happens to this function when I plug in 3. So um, that is f of x. And f of 3 would be square root of 3 divided by 3 minus 3 raised 5. Square root of 3 divided by 0. We have a divide by zero problem, so naturally there will be a break at three. So let's see. Let's go ahead and graph this function. Um, square root of x divided by don't forget the parentheses. Parentheses are your friends. Um, and just like we expected, at x is equal to 3, we have 0, 1, 2, 3. At 3, there is a break. So the graph of this function so having a scientific calculator is quite useful. So make use of it. Um, so what is happening when we approach 3 from the left hand side? So the value of the function as x changes sort of is going that way toward negative infinity. So limit x approaches 3 from the negative side of this function would be negative infinity. Again, this is an infinite limit, not limit at infinity. So, if we have a problem of this sort, um, it might look um, lengthy and troublesome, but always try to simplify the problem before you proceed, if at all possible. So, is it feasible for us to simplify this expression?